Well, it's winter, guys. Welcome back. Sorry I've been away for so long. We had snowmageddon last week, almost two feet of snow on Monday and Tuesday. And just a crazy family week I haven't traded since a week ago, Thursday or whenever that was. So I'm going to take your advice. I'm doing a question and answer video today, Saturday today. Been a bunch of stuff going on just family-wise and, and all that. And in fact, a house you can see right back there just went up for sale. And my mother was looking to downsize. So we got it for her anyway. So that's going to be another whole thing coming up. But that was a deal that had to be made pretty quickly. So that's all done now. It had to come together pretty quick. And I was awful glad I was able to help. We've been in a real deep freeze here, like minus 35 the last couple of days. That's pretty much the same Celsius or Fahrenheit. It's a lot nicer now. It's about minus 20 Celsius, which is like maybe minus three or four Fahrenheit. While I'm out here, I got to get the snowmobile started and flood the rink. It's going to be enough of a day, but let's get started with some questions. DPVR, thanks for the suggestion of a Q&A video. Says among other things, wondering what exactly is my confirmation. Says my trading style seems a little bit like an art. You got that right. That's right. I'm not saying I'm an artist, but it's not cut and dried. There are a number of things I look at. The main thing is the price action and the movement between support and resistance. But there's a whole little checklist of things that I'll, I'll look for as far as whether to take the trade or not. But the main point of when to get out and when to get in, for the most part, that's just the price action. And most of it really is just from seeing it for so long and getting familiar with how the market behaves. I don't have any one particular confirmation that I look for other than another. So you will hear me rationalize why I get in and out as I trade in my videos. You know, it's much like any other profession or trade. There's not just one way to do it. Talk to a painter. I don't even mean like an artist painter. I just mean like a, an auto body man or house painter, something like that. There's not any one particular thing that works every single time. There's ins and outs to it. You know, I do have rules and I do have things I look for and various different confirmations that I will look for. But it doesn't have to be any one of them. It doesn't have to be all of them. It really just depends on the market at that moment. Just something that comes with experience. Griminator, nice to hear from you again. Do you ever use volume profile in your trading analysis? Sometimes, not my daily analysis. Once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks, I'll take a look at the volume profile chart. I think they're cool. I think they're really interesting. But I've never traded having it on my main screen. I don't even have it on a side screen. I just switch it on every once in a while to take a look at it. Ed Lee, nice to hear from you too, Ed. Thanks for the videos. Did I have a mentor when I learned to trade? No, I didn't. I did not have a mentor. I don't personally, you know, reach out and shake hands, know anybody in my area that's a trader. I don't know of anybody in my entire town that's a trader. I'm probably the only one doing this for a living. Even in the city around, the only traders I know really are people that live far away that I'll email or whatever. I pretty much just had a whole lot of time in front of the screen and um, trial and error, really. I watch lots of videos and uh, listen to lots of lectures and that sort of thing. Uh, I always liked listening to Linda Rashke. I don't really trade like she does, though my charts are borrowed from her. That's the type of chart that she uses. I don't trade her way, but listening to all of her various talks that she's done all over the years on YouTube and uh, things like that. You know, I listen pretty close to that. So she's the closest thing to a mentor I'd say I have, but you know, I've never had an actual mentor. Mojo just made a comment that, you know, it's been a while since you've seen me take a loss. Last day I traded, I took that first loss. I've taken lots of losses over these videos, but for the most part, I get out at break even ish or a very small loss. That was a full loss though. Just a comment he made slowly desensitizing himself to losing trades and keeping calm. So you don't make an irrational trade for the next trade. Yes, Mojo, that is so hard. Um, it's still hard for me now, really, but it pays to be disciplined or rather it saves you money, which is the same thing. Deacon asks, saw him a video on my trading setup and interested in the chair. Must be a big guy like me. Yeah, office chairs suck. <laughs> this one that I have, oh, is pretty great and it's still holding up great. So I'll, I'll put the information down here for you. Uh, or maybe put it in the bottom of the video so you can see just right from Amazon, but it's a super heavy duty chair. It's got an extra high back, extra wide. It's got all steel, no plastic. Pretty great chair. Zaki, thanks for your comment, Zaki. Hope I'm saying that right. 
Nice to hear from you from Belgium. Notice you're using bars and some oscillators in some time frames, but candles and volume and others. Can you tell us why that is and what the oscillator is? The oscillator is a 310 oscillator. That's borrowed from Linda Rashke. That's an oscillator of her design. I don't use it very much, but if I'm going to look at an oscillator, that's the one I look at. I use price bars on most of my charts just because it takes up less space and I can squeeze them in more to see further back. I like candles for charts I'm looking closer at and for the shorter time frame charts just because they're easier to see. Watched other videos and understand that you watch the tape. That's your advice for new traders is to monitor and record price every half hour for a few weeks. Yes, just to get familiar with the price action of the market. Came across what's called market maker hybrid method from Steve Morrow and Mark Douglas. Price, volume, support, resistance. Is that close to what your method is? Well, I don't know because I've never heard of that particular method. Uh, so it's not the same, obviously. It might be similar. I don't know. I've never heard of it. Other question. Pretty sure you use a 4,000 tick chart. Tried it and it's equivalent of a one-minute chart. Well, not always. That's the thing. It's a 4,000 tick chart. So at some points of the day, it might be, it might print a bar every minute. And then the next bar might take two minutes. The next bar might take five minutes. That's what I like about it. It's sensitive to not just volume, not volume exactly, but sensitive to the number of transactions. So it lets you see kind of the activity level of the market along with the price. And I just found that, you know, currently with the current volume of the S&P, that 4,000 just kind of gives me a, a speed that I like. Well, I'm losing daylight and I'm really just putting off the other stuff I got to do. So we will finish that and we'll continue this inside. Here, yeah, that's a lot better. Nice and warm in here. Sammy Tong asks, what other platform do you use aside from TradingView? Thanks for your question, Sammy. Um, I use TradingView for charting, but I use Sierra Chart for execution, actually placing my trades. Why do I do that? Well, TradingView is much prettier, much easier to use for charting purposes, looking at different time frames, switching between time frames, stuff like that. Sierra Chart is rock solid for actually executing the trades, never, ever, ever crashing using very little computer resources is just a perfect execution platform in my opinion. Paul B. Thanks Paul for writing, talking about my two minute video there. Uh, winning Euphoria has turned a really good day into one of my worst in the past due to not being able to let go that I was ahead after a loss trying to rush back into the green. Yeah, that's really hard. You know, it's still hard now to do that, but fact is I just quit positive. That's all that matters. It doesn't have to be a lot. Over time, it will equal out. If you're negative and you get positive, don't let yourself go negative again. J-M-U-N-O-Z. Jumonos. Jumonos. Thanks for writing. Hope you had a great break. Well, it wasn't relaxing, but it was a lot of had to get stuff done stuff, and at least it's done. So, thank you. What tick chart are you using for your trades on Sierra? 4,000 tick on the full-size ES on Sierra is what I use. Doesn't mean that's what you have to use, but that works great for me. Practicing trading the micro Dow, trying to figure out how many ticks I should use for the 8 to 10.30 Eastern trading time. Also, night trading sessions around 8 or 9. Wouldn't be much volume on the Dow at that time, I don't think. Currently using... 2,000 tick for the daytime micro Dow and 512 for the latter, for the nighttime. That's interesting. I'd have to look that up um, as far as what I would use. But if you want to figure that out, just adjust it from the ES um, or adjust it from the micro ES. I kind of recommend, like, I use a 4,000 on the ES. The micro ES is approximately, not exactly, but like about half the volume, a little less maybe. So you know, 1,800, 1,900, 2,000 on that. Check what the volume is on the micro Dow and adjust it according to what a 2,000 would be on the micro E-mini or a 4,000 would be on the regular E-mini um, in order to get the same kind of amount of bars that I get. That's really the way to do it. it it's not, of course, a tick chart is not a volume chart, but it's the closest way you can adjust for it. Mojo. Nice to hear from you, Mojo. One, third, one thing I've learned about my trading is I'm absolutely terrible at taking trends. Always thinking it's going to reverse now. Yeah, and you probably see me catch those little reversals too, and that might not be all that helpful. Um, I love catching a little reversal whenever I figure that something's just going to take a breath and catch that little breath. But that takes kind of a lot of time and 
just a lot of hours to kind of get used to when those are going to happen. I don't catch them all either or get them all right, but I always liked counter trend trading for a short trade or a small, not necessarily short, but counter trend trading for a quick trade. You know, when you see a market that's going like that, you know, you got to be looking at going short and just trying to catch one of these to go short again. But, you know, it all comes with experience. So figure it out. Dom writes, love your videos, Matt. Thank you, Dom. Options trader, thinking about focusing more on trading futures. Now, somebody else further back, I can't find the comment for whatever reason, was asking me if I trade options. I have never once traded an option. I don't have any interest in trading options. Not to say that it's not a good idea or that you can't do well at it. It's, you know, it's the same reason I don't trade a penny stock either because I just don't want to be bothered with it. It's too much trouble. It's too complicated, too much to figure out. <laughs> just, just not for me. Futures are just so straightforward. You buy, it goes up, you make money, it goes down, you lose money. You sell, it goes down, you make money, it goes up, you lose money. You can get out anytime you want. You don't have to worry about time decay and all that stuff. It's just simple. Cooking music. That's who it was. Cooking music, I just found it. Asked me about options trading. Seb's Jacqueline. Thanks for your question. Really enjoying your videos. Very informative, honest, down-to-earth approach. Well, that's what I'm going for. Thank you. He's a newbie. What's an example of a high volume and liquid market? Best for me to watch and learn before I begin my real trading. Good question. You can't get much higher volume and liquid than the S&P E-mini futures. Or the Dow E-mini futures are pretty good, too. The micro versions of those are good. That's if you want to trade futures like I do. I just think futures make a lot more sense for day trading than anything else. So I would look into the futures, the stock index futures, particularly the Dow and the S&P. So that'd be the ES, the YM. Look at the NASDAQ, the NQ if you want. But you won't be able to get the actual price data real time for that without paying for it. So you don't want to do that if you're just observing. So go on to like tradingview.com. TradingView is free. You can pay for more services, which I do. But basic one chart, a few indicators, whatever, one chart at a time is free. Go on there and look up a CFD feed, okay, of the Dow, which would be called something like US 30, and the S&P, which would be something like the US 500, whatever. Look that up and chart that. And you can watch that market because whether it's tied to the cash or it's tied to the futures contract as far as the price itself goes, it's still going to give you a pretty good idea of how that market moves. Completely free, zero obligation, zero cost, as long as you want, only your time. That's what I would do to just get a start observing, getting a feel for how a good liquid market works, such as the ES futures. And you can even paper trade on TradingView for free also. So it's kind of a win-win for fooling around and learning. Terry says, nice damage control. Yeah, Terry, I am all about damage control. Believe me, when this, this theme has come back in the comments a number of times, I've gone through the whole, like, being in the hole and then getting positive and then not being that much positive and just wanting to get a little bit more. That's happened to me, like, and fingers and toes wouldn't cover it amount of times. And, you know, you just get to the point where you're just sick of losing money and you know you gotta, you know, kind of plug your nose and, and just clock out for the day. It's a lot better to do that for little or nothing than to wind up being kicked out later on because you lost too much. Comment from Stephen just today. Thank you for your comment, Stephen. Uh, this is actually Tuesday, so this will be today's video. Um, it's right now about 1.30 in the afternoon, and I was supposed to meet the guy at the other house to move the hot tub here at 9.30, and I've been waiting for his phone call ever since. So my guess is he's not coming today. <laughs> but anyway, no trading for me today because of that. Um, kind of wrecked the morning, and by the time I got back here, it was like 11 o'clock, so I just said the heck with it and did some stuff around the house and then finishing up this video so you guys will have something for today. Steven's talking about nice to see your day-to-day -day lifestyle. Well, there's some of it, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't have to sit in front of the charts for hours at a time. In fact, if you do, you're more than likely not going to do as well, in my opinion. My opinion, of course, but uh, I've never sat through the entire day trading. You know, I've sat through the day watching the market, like from begin, from open to close type of thing, but I've never traded right through a whole day. Most I can really get through would be 
like about maybe nine until one or two. I can't do a whole day. I don't have the, I just, I don't have the patience really to sit that way. Now, if I had to wait that long to find setups, I'd do it because like what choice do you have? But no, you don't have to do that. The market gives you enough chances to get in and out and make a couple of bucks, you know, in the first couple hours of every morning. I don't really like to trade past 11 as a rule. And if I have my way, I'll be out before 930. So as you've seen, that's the way I really like to trade. But no, you don't have to sit in front of the market all day. But you do want to spend lots of time studying the market. You don't want to spend the time trading it. You want to spend it studying it till you get to know it well. That makes the trading part easier and shorter. Glenn gets the comment of the day here. You could have made enough for the day after the open yesterday to set you up all month. Well, I know that now, Glenn. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing. I make the decision to get out when I get out for the day, you know, and... Some days, like I even said yesterday, I'm probably going to miss out on a lot today. I knew that, and I didn't care because, you know, I hadn't been trading for a number of days, and I just wanted to make sure I had a positive day, make enough to make it worthwhile, and get out. There's always tomorrow. When you don't worry about being able to make money, there's always tomorrow. You don't have to catch every point that you can when it's there every day. Not to say it's a bad idea, you know, that it would have been ideal if I'd caught all that, but... I made the decision to walk away knowing that when I come back tomorrow or whenever it is, I'll most likely be able to pull some more points out of the market. And to me, that the consistency of a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit is a way easier way to trade and sleep at night than whenever you know you got to really push the gas on the big days. Anyway, guys, I think that's about it for now. i got to get going. Grab my cheat sheet or newsletter down there, jtradernextdoor.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys again soon.